Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, hi, my name's Chris Smith, Shambles Guru on the interweb, and I'd like to share a story between my CRV, which is a Honda motor vehicle, and a dash cam. It's a love affair. I've had a CRV for a while and thought it would be useful to have a camera attached to the front of the car and record what is happening in, in front of the car. Um, I'm told that in some places with some insurance companies that also reduces your premiums on your insurance policies. And I, uh, I've had a look at several of these uh, dash cams and I live in North Thailand in Chiang Mai and there's a whole variety of them here, different prices, different ranges, different specifications. And my problem has been what specifications do I actually need to be using to make a decision? Um, <laughs> and trust me, there are a lot of different ones to choose from, uh, expensive and cheap. The, uh, the solution for me, though, came with uh, a trip in the summer to back to the UK, actually to visit my mum. I thought I'd make use of that time to do a, re a bit of research on uh, dash cams. And one place to visit is uh, uh, a vehicle... Um, retailer called Halfords and I thought I'd go into there and ask their staff to share their expertise on what is the best dash cam to buy. Now there are some criteria, here's uh, uh, a snippet off a web page of an Australian company on what criteria you might ask yourself about. Um, but I think I basically ignored all that and asked the uh, shop uh, guys um, what should I buy? Now, I was very surprised in the UK to find that this company, Nextbase, almost had a monopoly on uh, on dash cams, which is a real surprise. <laughs> but it also made my job much easier because now all I had to do is decide which of their range to buy. And the range I decided for, the one to buy out of their range, was called the 512GW Ultra. Now, it's not the top end of their range, the top end actually has a rear view camera as well as a front facing camera. This one is just a front facing camera. Some of the criteria here, but I'll go into uh, some of the criteria to look at a little bit later in the video or to consider a little bit later in the video. Here's the camera I, I uh, decided on buying and did buy. Here it is with the uh, sucker that goes in the windscreen. Actually, they had some advice on how to place it on the windscreen um, to stop uh, uh, reflections off the window coming into the camera. And they've even got a polarizing filter on the front of this one, which you can adjust to reduce reflections off the glass. Um, they also say you should place it where the windscreen wipers cover the glass in front of this so that when it rains, you can still see what you're looking at. But when I got back to Thailand, I had my boxes of my uh, dash cam and a connection kit and thought I'd, I'd try putting it in and then had second thoughts and thought, no, I'll go to the local Honda agent and these are the guys I went to. Actually, we bought the car from them. And they said, yeah, we'll fix it for you. Uh, it will cost 500 baht. I didn't want to connect directly to the cigarette lighter socket because that meant some wiring would just be hanging down in the middle of the car. I wanted all the wiring to be hidden and go down from the cam to where the webcam, the dash cam, into the uh, fuse box on the car, which is underneath the steering wheel, in fact. So I went to Honda Paradise and I said, set it up for me, please. And I videoed what, it, what they did. And that video is what follows now. Now, if you, it does get boring, it's a bit long, feel free to use our friend, the fast forward button, which is probably at the bottom of your screen now, uh, and go past that. And then I'll come back for the last minute or so of the video um, to go through the criteria and my experiences of having used this now for a, a couple of months. So I hope you uh, enjoy it. This is Shambles Guru in Chiang Mai, North Thailand. I'm in the Honda dealer. Or one of the hundred years because there's several of them here and I bought a, uh, a dash cam in the UK and we're going to connect it here the dash cam is called next 
space, which seems to have, here it goes here, next space, which seems to have uh, a fairly big monopoly in the UK. There's very, other, very few other ones I could find. Coming with the camera was also, I bought separately this connection kit, so that when it goes behind the mirror up here, the wiring all goes behind the dashboard. I noticed that there is, uh, uh, is it four meters of cable there for that. It will take any SSD card in there, but I bought a, a 32 gigabyte one, which is actually also sold by Nextface. And uh, talking with uh, Halfords, is where, where, is where I bought it in, in England, it's, uh, they said 32 gigabyte work, third party 32 gigabyte work, but they apparently had some problems with those. Well, the technician is here, he's going, to he's going to connect it so that all the wiring is, uh, is hidden. Uh, chew a light cap. Look, chew a light cap. Look hello. Good. Yeah. Hello, hello. <laughs> okay, that's his name. <laughs> and uh, uh, I suspect though that once the thing is all fitted in, and it will connect, it will actually generate, the camera will generate a, a, a Wi-Fi uh, network, then the iPad or an iPhone, I guess, more likely, uh, will connect to that. I know this iPhone more likely because the app is designed for a phone rather than for uh, an iPad. Um, and I downloaded the app already onto this particular iPad I'm using now to record this. Um, but I suspect that uh, once it's all connected, that uh, I will have to download an update to the camera software onto an SSD card using my laptop or PC and then put that SSD card into the camera and update the firmware um, on there. I suspect you could do this yourself but because I want the wiring hidden and you could have the wiring just go into the uh, into the uh, uh, into here but that's going to be messy looking. I want the wiring to be hidden behind all of the facade there and go down to the fuse box. And actually the fuse box, this is a Honda CRV which I forgot to mention. The fuse box is actually underneath the steering wheel, so we're going to take it down to there somewhere. Difficult to see. And I'll come back later on this video and show you uh, what other things have been happening as we go along. <laughs> We're going to the fuse box. I'm not quite. I'm, I'm not sure why, but I'm a bit nervous about this. Oh, look at that! All the electric goes towards the uh, uh, to underneath the steering wheel. You can see where the guy's going. He's just pulled a bit of plastic facade off. And he also pulled off some protection, which is underneath there. You can see the white piece of uh, polystyrene insulation on the floor. There are two ways to connect this. One is what we're doing, which hopefully will be hidden wiring. And the other uh, way of doing it is, of course, having the power cable, of course, having the power cable from the camera, which will be behind the mirror, just hanging down and going to the cigarette lighter. I do not want that. <laughs> For some reason, I'm really nervous about uh, this. It looks uh, fairly confident. I'm really a little bit nervous because I suspect they've never put this particular camera in. But hopefully it's a generic type job, you know. I'm trying to pull it. Oh, he's just, oh, he's just, I wonder if this is a better view out here. No, no, it's too much of a reflection to see what's going on. Can you see what's going on? Somewhere? Okay, yeah. I'm saying yes, but I don't really know why. Oh, easy. The camera actually does uh, snap off that mount, so the mount stays on there. Because um, the advice is don't leave it there when the car's parked because people can see it and then they can steal it. But if they want to steal it, they're going to break into the car usually anyway. Well, not usually. to admit that he's doing all this very confidently. I'll come back in a moment when we start to pull the 
interior apart. And it looks like we're not actually pulling the facade off, he's just pushing it through a little hole at the edge, a little uh, uh, space at the edge, so he's not pulling that, uh, that plastic off there. He's just, uh, he, I was just looking at how you're going to take it off and then he just, he just pulled this insulation this insulation off here, it's, he just pulled it off here, no screws or anything, just pulled his fingers off here. So it looks like it's going to be easier to get the wiring down in some way, into the, uh, the fuse box down here. It does look like this part, he isn't actually pulling the, uh, out the roof off, he's actually pushing the wiring into a small gap between the glass and the uh, padding there. Actually, I feel better about that. I had a feeling he was going to pull off the whole of that roofing, which then you wonder whether it will actually go back on or not. He was using a small spacer to make a gap big enough to put the wiring in there, which is great. Let's go around the other side, see what he's going to do with it that side. Oops, I hope there's no scratches. I think uh, that's not a standing knife, it's just a piece of plastic. Dear viewers, remember if you get bored with this, there's something called a fast forward button which is on the bottom. Uh, the commentary, which is my commentary, is in there. Oh, look at this. Just put it, push it in the space there. Well, I thought this was going to be a longer job than, uh, than uh, it's going to be. It's actually now uh, September 2017. We've had this car for two years. Um, lots of electronics in these Honda CRVs. We bought it in 2015. And uh, we actually had to change the battery last month, just after two years. One of the downsides of having a car which is so reliant on electricity. We have to do this. Um, you have to be a slim build, <laughs> otherwise you're not going to get under there to the fuse box. I uh, actually I had to look under there to find an OBD socket a couple of months ago. And if you don't know what an OBD is, onboard diagnostics. It's a little device you plug into a socket, and then you can look at all the uh, statistics coming out of the car's electronics. OBD, onboard diagnostics. I think the, uh, the guy here, you know, he's looking at the uh, manual, but I think he's looking at the English manual, which is good because we're in Thailand and uh, so he's, obviously, he's bilingual, which is a positive aspect. Looking now where to plug the, uh, the electrics into. Back in a moment. There is an element of nervousness from uh myself here as I noticed he's just gone off to get something but not only has he got the instruction book and uh, it's a day of uh, if you don't know how to do it you can't find out how to but here's all the electronics lying on the floor
some soothing music uh, with this. Propet, propet. <laughs> uh, remember, boys and girls, there will be a test at the end of this. Like a James Bond movie. Cut the red wire. No, cut the green wire. The black wire. serviced about a week ago and one of the things they did was steam clean the car. This is like new, isn't it? Two years old. That phenomenal. I have a lot of respect for Honda. In fact, most Japanese cars. to now setting up the, uh, the, the screen, which I think I'll probably do when I get home, now that the uh, power is there. What is that? Uh, oh, okay. 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 Uh, in the electrics in the fuse box so that he could uh, uh, put the terminals in from the uh, dash pan. So, okay, now that's on video. So that was it. So this whole process took about uh, 30 minutes. And uh, I suspect it's going to take me a bit longer than 30 minutes to configure the actual uh, dash cam itself. I was a little bit worried about it obscuring the view of the driver, but it's, it's not too bad. I guess you get used to it. Okay. 30 minutes. That's it, boys and girls. More on the actual configuration. Probably in another video, or maybe I'll do it and drop it onto this video. I'm back. I uh, hope you enjoyed those uh, videos, uh, even though they're pretty raw and not edited. Uh, you got the rubbish as well as the good stuff. So a few things to uh, consider if you're going to buy a, a dash cam yourself. This is the one I ended up buying. Uh, you see the price is £149. I bought it uh, in the Whole Foods store, but you can buy them online from their website. You can actually get them on Amazon as well. Mm, I wonder if you can get them on Amazon in the uh, new Singapore store, which is open recently. Um, I also bought the uh, hard wire kit, uh, and here it is on the Amazon page, just to show you can buy it on Amazon. And uh, that was this. This was about six, about twenty pounds, sixteen twenty pounds, and you have to buy this if you want the wiring to go straight from the camera down hidden to the fuse box in the in the car um, of course it meant that the cigarette lighter adapter and wiring that they gave with the kit the camera I've actually I don't need it I can throw it away I also bought um, an SSD card to go in the camera and the one I bought was a 32 gigabyte um, but this was uh, sold by Nextbase 
I wanted to put a 64 gigabyte card in, and that would extend the recordings from about four hours to about eight hours. But this was the biggest one that Next Base sold, and some reviews suggested that third party larger SSD cards had some problems. So that's why I, I stuck with this one. When the camera's recording, it records about six minutes at a time, I think. I might be off a bit there. And then immediately stops and starts again. And that means you've got lots of uh, connected six minutes of video on the SSD card. And that means, or that makes it easier for you to find a particular time frame, a particular piece of video you're looking for, rather than looking through four hours of video. Actually, once the card is filled, um, then the camera starts to overwrite the old stuff. So if you're going to do more than four hours recording, you know you're not you're going to lose the beginning of that four hours. Um, but in general use, that's uh, that, that's quite good. There is, uh, which I haven't mentioned at all yet, there is an app for iPhone and iOS and iPad. I've put the app on my iPad. The the camera itself has Wi-Fi built into it and it will also uh, uh, so it creates a hotspot and so all you do with your mobile device is you connect to the Wi-Fi that's being generated by the camera by that particular version of the camera um, and then you can download to your device the videos that you want to download you can download the whole lot interestingly when you see the video on the back of the camera it's 720p but when you download it, it's a higher resolution. And you might think that's not too important, but it is if you try to identify license plates, for example, on, uh, on, the, on cars in front of you. Um, let's have a look here. Well, these are the criteria again on choosing a dash cam. You can uh, pause the video and look at them if, if, if you like. Let's see what else I can remind it about. The, uh, the camera itself uh, comes on automatically when my car uh, is switched on and, and the engine's running. And, uh, and then it switches itself off about 30 seconds after the camera, after the car switched off. Uh, it, uh, the screen is interesting. Some countries apparently um, it's illegal for you to have the screen on the camera while you're driving. And next base obviously th have thought of that. And uh, in the menu somewhere, you can set it so that the screen blanks out after after 30 seconds so you don't see it on the screen. Um, there, there are lots of different uh, uh, things that this camera can do. It's really quite amazing. Even if you're parked and everything's switched off, if, the, uh, if somebody bangs into your car, the camera will come on and uh, record something. But obviously only at the front of the camera because I haven't got the back camera in, in this particular um, version. Um, also, if you have an accident, and so there's some sort of um, device to, 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 to register um, movement in the camera, an accelerometer, um, what it will do is it will then lock that piece of video so you can't even uh, accidentally overwrite it. Um, on the screen itself, when the video, and I haven't got it on here, I don't think, I didn't put it on here, which is sad, I should have added it to this video, when you look at the video, there's lots of things on the video, including your GPS coordinates. I rang Nextbase up in the UK and said, would it work in Thailand? And they said it should do. Uh, you switch it on, it should look for the nearest satellite and, and connect and get the GPS coordinates. And it worked perfectly. So that sounds good for most countries. Um, in the video that's recorded, it also records your speed. It records um, your number plate of your car, it, your own car, if you've actually put it into the video. Um, oh, I should have a screenshot here. Too late now. But there's a lot of things, uh, a lot of things that uh, are recorded, lots of information recorded on, on the video it, itself. So, to finish off, I bet I missed something out and I'm sure I'll think of it. Uh, here's a picture of the uh, camera, which is actually... Uh, removed from the holder which is has a big rubber sucker on the glass um, there's a magnetic connection so it clips on easily and you can hide it if you want to while you're parked so nobody's going to pinch it or less likely to pinch it um, but then of course the uh, parking mode won't work if somebody hits you it won't record anything 
there. Oh, there is a there is a microphone also built in, which you can switch on or switch off. If your microphone's switched on, let your passengers know that their conversations with you are actually being recorded. <laughs> that could be fun. Um, like most of electronics nowadays, there's an instruction manual, and lo and behold, NextBase have one which is available to download as a PDF. I've downloaded it and put it into iBooks or eBooks uh, reader on my uh, iPad here. And there are 44 pages of it. So for no cost, if you want to investigate this even more to see what it does and what I haven't mentioned, uh, download this PDF and, and have a look at that. And boys and girls, that's it. That's the end of this little story. Um, and as a sideline, everything I've just done and made, I've done on an iPad. The screenshots, the screen recording, the videos. And I hope it's helpful in your journey to, to look for a, a, a dash cam. Have fun.